guys, so I, I bought another Distress LR3. Uh, I bought it privately, which I prefer doing over auctions. Um, I have, I love these vehicles. The build quality and the and the capabilities of these things are unmatched. Uh, if you don't mind getting your hands dirty, these are some of the best trucks you can buy right now for overlanding and and just everyday use, especially with the four liter uh, six cylinder engine. Now, if you think you can you can run these things and and you know at this age and uh, have your dealer maintain them. You know that's that's uh, that's a tough call. Uh, the, you know the, the 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 prices are astronomical for re for repairing these if you actually take them to the dealer. So the only way to do this is is you know to get dirty and and fix them yourselves, right? A lot of the issues with these things uh, have to do with the with the air suspension systems. Uh, uh, my last one had an air suspension problem, and uh, so does this one, as you can see in the in the in the intro. So I wanted to, to record this video and show you how I went about troubleshooting this, uh, this problem. But unfortunately, the repair was so simple that there was nothing really to record. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, got, got lucky on that one. Uh, but I did, uh, I did thankfully find another issue with the air suspension that I'm going to show you along with with the, the previous problem that I found that actually fixed the suspension. So if you you know just keep watching, uh, and I'll show you how I went about uh, you know finding the other problem and well, what it was. This, this could have been another compressor in a, down the road because of that problem. Uh, you know any air leaks on these systems. Uh, even minute ones will cause the compressor to run more than it should, which you know obviously will wear it prematurely. So hopefully this this helps uh, helps somebody. Uh, I know it's not what I wanted, uh, but uh, it is what it is. Um, you might have the same exact problem. So if you enjoy it, give me a give me a thumbs up and uh, and comment. A lot of these comments are usually helpful. For other people when they read through them and subscribe i plan on making more of these videos now that i have more time on my hands so the way i go about uh, troubleshooting these i should i should mention is is i don't have a computer or a scanner that will scan uh, these land rovers for suspension issues uh, my computer scans transmission control modules airbag modules safety systems and engine modules but no body control modules so if you do have a scanner that scans body control modules, you know, this, this might be a simple uh, simple thing for you. Just plug it in and it should be able to troubleshoot it that way. I didn't have one. I might get one in the future uh, because it's it's getting annoying every time I want to scan a body control module, uh, parking sensor, something like that. I can't do it. So the way I troubleshoot these, you know, the, the first thing you want to do is you want to check and make sure that the compressor uh, you know, fires up. You know, it, it, the compressor might be firing up. You, you, your Land Rover might be slammed to the ground, sitting on bump stops, but the compressor might still be firing up. So, so in that case, you might have a leak, right? So what happened on this one is the compressor fired up for about 15 seconds and then it quit because it was looking for, for a pressure signal which it wasn't getting, right? So it thought it thought it had a leak in it, in the system, and it basically shut down after 50 seconds of of uh, nothing because it wasn't getting that signal. So check that first. It's uh, obvious, but uh, you know, just listen by 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 the rear passenger door, and make sure that compressor fire is up. The second thing you want to test is is your relay and and, and the fuse uh, that's under the hood. Uh, you can find locations for it. You know, a lot of guys have pictures and stuff where it is. Uh, if you have a user user manual, it'll, it'll tell you which fuse it is and which relay it is. I had a spare relay from my old one when I was troubleshooting that one. So that, that's how I was able to, to ascertain that the relay is not the problem. Uh, the, the next thing you wanna do is check the compressor. Run 12 volts directly to the compressor. Uh, the only way to do that is to disconnect the wires and the harness, make sure that you know, there's nothing connected to the computer, otherwise you'll, you might be frying your systems. So uh, disconnect 12 volts directly to it. I'll show you uh, later on in the, in the video how to do that. And then you disconnect one of the airlines and make sure you got the pressure coming out when the compressor is running. 
check for uh, the next next thing you want to do is check for broken airlines uh, in the front uh, valve block and the rear valve block around the compressor area uh, you know all the, these plastic airlines they, they, they tend to break uh, under stress you know with lots of salt and all that stuff you know they break um, check your tank connections at the at the, at the at the expansion tank or the or the pressure tank uh check all those connections uh and then all your four air struts right on top there is a little the, the lines go into the air strut from the top so you can you can clearly see that when you lift the car up and you you shove your head in there and take the splash guards off you'll have to have the splash guards off anyways to test the fuse block uh, at least the front one or not the fuse block but the uh, valve block so I mean, you'll have to remove that splash card anyways, or the fender liner. So test those. Uh, and I'm, I mean, if nothing looks broken and and, and compressor is producing pressure, uh, that means that, that your, your, your problem is somewhere in your wiring, uh, somewhere maybe in your valve locks, in your solenoids, uh, in the pressure sensors or the height sensors, uh, at which point I would suggest getting it scanned uh, unless you're really brave and want to attempt uh, fixing the system, but uh, it becomes a little complicated because you can't manually pressurize the system unless you you put T-offs and stuff in there. Because if you just want to put air into the tank and see if it pressurizes up, it won't let you do that because the valve blocks won't allow it. So you'd have to jumper the valve blocks somehow. Uh, there might be instructions on online how to do that, but. You know, a scanner or even taking it somewhere to get scanned might be a big help at that point. Okay? And here goes the video. Okay, we'll start with how I tested the compressor to begin with. Uh, the green shows the harness that has to be disconnected. This is on the compressor on the bottom of the vehicle. Once the cover was removed, the green shows the, the harness that has to be uh, unplugged before you go do any testing so you don't damage anything. The red shows the plug that has to be disconnected as well and then you can run power to the red and black wire 12 volts uh, to test the compressor. So once you have your uh, your uh, 12 volt uh, power supply ready and <coughs> the harness is connected and you're ready to test, uh, it's very important that you disconnect this uh, center airline uh, from the from the compressor going to the uh, to the uh, pressure switch and then to the air tank. It's very important that you disconnect this because uh, this, The valve the solenoid is still closed. So when you turn on the compressor, this will accumulate pressure without going anywhere The way the system works There's two valve blocks one in the front one in the back uh, air compressor and then um, air tank uh, air reservoir uh, so the valve blocks, one of them is located on the passenger side, in the passenger side wheel well, right behind the, the uh, mud splash guard here, towards the front of the bumper. The other one is located in the back, to the right of the compressor assembly. Okay guys, I've got the cover for the air compressor removed. It's right there. There's the compressor. As you can see, the, the compressor assembly has been replaced. The motor looks original, but the assembly looks brand new. So the original problem was here. See, there's a pressure sensor there. And this... This plug was not in all the way, so the compressor would kick on uh, for 15 seconds. And as soon as it saw that, you know, the, the 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 system saw that there was no pressure being accumulated because the the what I what I think is a pressure switch it didn't register, it would just shut down and give me an error message on the on the dashboard. So that's fixed now for all intents and purposes. You know, this is basically fixed. Now, I removed this cover. It's really quiet in the garage right now. I don't hear any hissing from the air tank. But I do hear very slight, faint hiss somewhere around this whole assembly here. 
So we're gonna spray this down with a soapy solution. And we'll see what happens. Okay guys, so this is the second uh, valve block here, just behind the air strut. I soaked everything with, uh, with a soap solution. As you can see, here's the compressor with some numbers. So this was worked on very recently, and I think that's what caused it. Well, it was worked on because it was broken, and then they put it together, and <clears throat> it still had a leak, and this thing kept running, and, and then finally it... The plug came off, I guess, from vibration or something. And but anyway, I mean, this compressor is pretty tiny for a large truck like this. I think that's a lot of the complaints. This thing is kind of weak to fill a big tank like this. But anyway, so I found a leak on this uh, on this pressure valve here on the top. There's that silver fitting there. So that was bubbling a little bit, so that made the tank that made the tank uh, drain slowly overnight, and then the compressor would have to kick on and pump and pump and pump to get this tank back. It's worth noting that none of the shocks leaked front or back, so this tank was just getting empty, and it needed to to pump up the pressure again, so it's ready. Okay. It's about 10 degrees Celsius, negative 10 degrees Celsius this morning. Left it sit overnight after the repair yesterday. It's in off-road mode right now, so it's in the highest setting. I didn't bother measuring the, the wheel heights to the fender liners, just kind of eyeballing it, but it didn't lose any height overnight so the car has been sitting for five days now just in normal mode not lifted and looks like we fixed it not sitting on the bump stops 